All right, welcome to the first of its kind, World Changing Manufacturers Network. Lisa Ryan has her ears to the ground and her heart in the game. Get ongoing education and new connections right here with Lisa and the Manufacturers Network. Buckle your seat, listen, and spread the word. Here's Lisa. Hey, it's Lisa Ryan, and welcome to the Manufacturers Network podcast. I'm excited to introduce you to today's guest, Karen Norheim. Karen is passionate about all things manufacturing. As a second generation coming into the leadership role for her family's company, American Crane and Equipment Corporation, Karen has sought to solidify the founder's legacy while putting her own stamp on the company culture. So, and I know that there's so much more in your background, and I just want to find out from you a little bit about your journey and you know, and how you got to where you're at. So welcome to the show, Karen. Hey, thanks for having me, Lisa. I'm really excited to be here. Um, yeah, so my, my uh, um, introduction to manufacturing came through my father. I, I work for our family's business, and um, so I, have, I am the second generation coming in. And what's interesting is I, had not, I wanted nothing to do with it. I did not think manufacturing was all that interesting or cool, and um, he recruited me to come work for him, and I very reluctantly said, okay, Dan, I'll, gi- I'll give it a shot. Well, thank goodness I did. Uh, because it, is, it has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, it, this is really um, my passion is with manufacturing. And I've been with our company now for 18 years. Um, amazing people, amazing products, and, and really wonderful experience to be able to work with my father as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And this has been, you and I were talking before the show, you know, kind of a really weird year in 2020, but I know that you were doing a lot of things really well when it came to your culture and just kind of keeping things going. So what did you see that worked best for you during these really uncertain times? Well, about, I think we're going on two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago, 2020 has warped my mind as far as, uh, you know, I feel like I'm in time travel and I lost a year. Um, but we, we put a lot of groundwork in as I was taking over leadership from my dad. I really saw that we needed to kind of lock in that founder's legacy, that culture that he really created for us. So we did a reboot and um, we call our culture grit matters, uh, perseverance, heart and integrity. And we did a lot of work on building our culture and cultivating our people and nurturing our environment. And thank goodness we did, um, because I think that is one of the key elements that when we got to, you know, March of, of last year, we were able to pivot and figure it out, um, you know, a ton of pain, but it was really our ability to persevere in 2020 and kind of survive the storm is really attributed to, to the cultural uh, reboot and, and the development of our, our people. They've really been amazing. I, I can't tell you how much, how proud I am of how they have risen, you know, and um, kind of stepped up in, in the crisis to, to keep us going and, and keep our business thriving. So take us back two years ago before you decided to put this in process. Uh, what did it look like? And then what were some of the specific steps that you did to kind of build that culture that you created, thankfully? <laughs> Well, and, you know, we had already had a good culture. It wasn't like we had a bad culture. It was just, it wasn't written down on paper. We didn't really have kind of those ritual things that kind of keep it top of mind. And we were starting to shift into a can't do versus a can do attitude. And so we kind of, I kind of saw that. And, and also, you know, I need people needed to know that I was in it for the long run. I didn't realize that. And my, I think this is what my father and I, that I learned from him through his mistake too, is that we didn't, people don't know what you're thinking. Like just because you know, every aspect of the business doesn't mean that the rest of your employees know what you're thinking and what's going on. And we needed to communicate this. We needed to communicate what was important, what was going on, that I'm sticking around, that my family is committed to the business for the next 40 years. You know, we needed to kind of really put those things in place. So it started out with kind of really defining what are those behaviors? I think that's really important with culture is, you know, what are those behaviors that make us great and are really important? for us to do well as a company and do well as, you know, as a people in an organization. So we identified those, we revised our typical, you know, vision, mission, uh, and a core values statements. And then we did a rollout and that just involved a ton of communication, 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 you know, to the point of 
you know, you get tired as the leader talk, hearing yourself talk, right? But it's so important. And so, you know, we had meetings, we have regular grit meetings uh, uh, monthly with different departments. We have grit contests, we have grit bucks to, to, to highlight good grit behavior. We've got postcards, we've got logos, we do a sticker competition, all kinds of stuff that we put in the works. And then when we got to really the end of March, as we realized, you know, COVID was here, we were sending a third of our workforce remote while we have um, a third in our plant manufacturing and another third doing service. We realized, I realized then we now need to even communicate more. And so we shifted to now uh, for the last year. Now we do a Monday video. We started out with two videos per week. We shifted down where I do a, every Monday, I do a video that goes out. There's a Friday email that goes out um, and also a text message with a blog information of just what's going on, new orders, what's happening, just general thoughts for me. And then, you know, we have other members of our leadership team communicating, communication hung throughout the building, just I can't even state it, communicate, communicate, communicate. And then, you know, living those values. And whenever I'm uh, with my people emulating what we believe in, but then also highlighting how they're actually doing that. It's always this constant, I like to call it gardening. You know, you're planting seeds, you're nurturing a little bit, you're growing, you're harvesting, and then you go back and you plant again and you grow and you harvest. And it's kind of a never ending thing. But I do feel as as our team has kind of bought into it and gets it and it feels good. We all want to work in a place, right. That um, where we're appreciated. And we say the most important thing in American crane is our people. You know, we want all want to work at a place that is fun to work at, that cares about us and that provides us with meaningful work. So as our team has really realized that's who we are or has evolved to kind of revisit that that's who we are, there's a flywheel effect. And I feel like we are really benefiting from kind of that flywheel of really coming together and kind of, you know, things are gelling. We're not perfect by any means. There's right. always room for improvement, but really, really impressed with how everyone has kind of embraced this and where we've come with it. And, and I think it's going to serve us well as we go into the future. And I think we've built upon it too, to be able to deal with the disruptive change that's been happening. This COVID was a disruption and there's other disruption out there. I feel like it, it has allowed us to be able to add another competitive advantage of, you know, we say we're gritty, we get things done, we, we you know, exceed our customers' ex- expectations, you know, we, we go that extra mile. But in addition, we can handle really tough situations and, and handle when things just don't go the way you want them to go, which I think is a good skill for a business to be able to have in general. Right. What do you feel would be the tipping point from when you first decided to implement this grit strategy and you said the communicate, communicate, you know, where did you see it kind of went from, oh goodness, and one more program that's not going to last to, wow, this is something that they're committed to. And it kind of, it brought you over that point where the employees bought into it and believed it. You know, I think that we had that coming into the end of 2019. I think in December of that year, we really had been explaining it and teaching it and living it and and starting to really almost even go to that next phase two of, of integrating it even more into the fabric of who we are. And we have fantastic people. I mean, that's always really important that that those that work for you are part of the culture and and everything matches. And so we really have amazing people, which makes it easy. But December really was the tipping point last year where I felt like, okay, like this is, we're still, we still got work to do, but we're doing good. And then I will say the second tipping point, like, so we were already over the edge and then like the, you know, here's a huge shove from the back was COVID. It just (laughs) locked in everything. It just, everybody stepped up. They, you know, I just feel like, they realized, we realized, I realized how important that that was for us to be able to meet. And we sent 40 some engineers home with their workstations to go home, go and do a home setup on a Friday. And they were all up and running and working and had not skipped a beat by the following Wednesday. I mean, it was just kind of remarkable, the flexibility and the willing to kind of work together, pull together that teamwork, that problem solving cultural thing that you want that that really is the difference between I, I think mediocrity and excellence. 
Right. And just to give that idea that it, this does take time. You, know, you yeah. were already starting with a good team and it still took almost two years to get to that tipping point. But then you saw how it benefited you when you needed it the most and you yeah. didn't have to worry about employees and also just taking care of them. And it sounds like you also empowered them to do what they needed to do. Here's your workstation, go set it up. And by Wednesday, they're good to go because you trusted and empowered them to do that. Yep. And I think that's part of what the COVID situation gave us is we had no choice but to empower our people. And and here was an opportunity where we just kind of threw everybody, you know, we were all in a moment of change. It's kind of this idea of one time has to be the first time. Well, look, guess what? We're all going to go to that, that moment. We're all going to have to use Microsoft Teams. We've never used it before. We're all going to have to figure out how to do electronic signatures on, you know, so it, it, um, it really kind of threw us into that uncomfortable space, which has then led to amazing growth and, and evolution of, of our people and I think our company. So, Awesome. So what are still some of the things that are keeping you up at night? Well, uh, something that I was already in tune to before we had the crisis, crises, you know, of, of 2020 was this idea of digital transformation that was coming. And I knew that for, our, for us as a company and as an industry, there was a lot of disruptive change. And it was something I had already been thinking about. We had talked about our digital roadmap. We had put in some foundational blocks into that. But, but the COVID then also like threw us into it even further for things that we had to do. And, and I think it's really important to, number one, realize that there's a lot of disruption out there right now because there's actually, I think it's um, John Chambers says that of the Fortune 500, in the next 10 years, 50% are going to be gone because of disruptive technology, digital digital change. And so I wanted to make sure we were on that cutting edge. And so we had put a, put groundwork in on that um, in January of this of 2020. We started our innovation lab. We already had some, like I said, some foundational technology blocks put in place. And in during COVID, we've been able to actually expedite some of those, actually almost, I would say, a 3x times advancement from where I expected us to be. But I still am nervous about that. There's still like things that I think we need to be able to do technology we need to embrace. And I just want to stay ahead of that wave because I want to be around in 10 years. I don't want to be one of these statistics that doesn't keep evolving because I think Unfortunately, you know, change really is the only constant. So how do we just keep being able to leverage the change and actually turn it into opportunities, right? And, and chances uh, and op- opportunities to grow and evolve. Right. And again, I think it comes down to communicating with your team too, because they see uh, all this technology coming in and maybe worried, is this going to affect my job? Am I still going to have a job? And keeping them involved in the process to say, no, you're still going to have a job. It just may be different because now we can do it better, stronger, faster than we've ever done before because of the technology we're now implementing. Yep, exactly. And also I'm a big believer in the concept that it's really about the human. And when we pull in, whether it's whether you're using um, augmented reality or remote assistance is a big thing we've been looking into and, and utilizing and also for training purposes. So we're looking at what they call um, uh, augmented reality, uh, some VR and also the traditional things, too. But as we're going through those things, it's really to amplify our current employees. So really taking them to the next level. So taking the core group that I have now and being able to do more or do it better or do it more efficiently and then locking them them in there. And I really think that the technology technology and digital transformation can be about the two marrying together where you're kind of making superhumans who are able to do all these things because they've got the AI power, they've got, you know, this different technology tool for collaboration and it's pulling it all together seamlessly so that we can then, that brain power, that human resource can really excel and advance. And I think it's, if you go in with that kind of mindset, um, I think that's really, really helpful. And yeah, it's an exciting time. I mean, there's lots of fun stuff going on. You have to pick what's, we're also not running to the shiny object while we have, we are doing some big strategic things, you know, we're being very focused on it and we play with things, determine if there's something viable and then we'll go to the next step. it's, It's definitely something that's like here and we have to figure out how to how to handle that and handle change in general because obviously not just digital transformation there's other changes in industry and the world and and stuff that can affect us right as we saw with covid 
Exactly. <laughs> Completely unexpected and out of the blue. Who would have thunk it? Yes. So as we're getting to the last uh, couple minutes of our time together, what would be, if you were thinking about people you'd like to network or learn from, what would be some of the, the ways that you would like, the t- kind of support that you would like to get maybe from other manufacturing colleagues? Well, I'm very obsessed recently with this idea of storytelling and really sharing, you know, sharing my story with you. And, and you know, I think it's important um, as the in the industry for, for all of us to share our stories, because that's how we learn. It's so much easier to learn from, from watching someone else who's had a struggle and figuring out, you know, how they've done it and they share their best practices or what worked for them. There's always some piece, you know, that you can help and integrate into your business. So I feel that knowledge sharing, that storytelling, you know, I, I love to hear the different stories of what's going on in our industry. And I think that that's a great way for us to learn and elevate each other. And in what ways, because there's so many things you are doing well and, and really working with your employees and your culture, what would be some of the, the things that you could offer in support to other manufacturing colleagues that may want to reach out to you? Um, I mean, again, just I'm happy to share my story, my evolution as both a leader, you know, I'm now president and CEO of our company, but the evolution as the uh, as the boss's daughter has been over, you know, like I said, the 18 years and there, you know, there's some learning and things that I, that I along the way could share with someone else in a family business. So I always like to talk about those experiences, our cultural transformation, which is ever evolving, you know, is definitely something. And also our digital transformation and any, I always am, uh, think it's important. Even if you don't think you're a role model, everybody's a role model, right? It, it, we all are, are, someone's always looking up to you. I think it's important to be, put yourself out there, share what's going on, the good, the bad. And, and that's always an opportunity to, to again, learn and, and grow. So I'm open to any of those types of conversations. And what's the best way for somebody to connect with you? Uh, probably LinkedIn or, or you, can, you certainly can share my email with anybody who's watching as well, which is knorheim at americancrane.com. Um, always open to new ideas. And, you know, I think as a leader, it's important that a portion of what you do, you know, we, we, we can get stuck in the, not stuck, it's very important, the financials of our business, you know, the development of our people, but some small amount of time, I, I put it into like my 10 to 15% amount of the time that I do is around scouting and seeking new ideas and, and looking out beyond the horizon. You know, I've set the course, I've set the strategy, I've set a roadmap out, but I still am the captain of the ship and I need to have that, you know, looking glass out saying, do I see around the corner? What's out there? What do I need to make sure we're aware of? And kind of filtering that in. So I think that's a great way to, to hear from others on, on what they're doing as part of that ability to scout and, and seek new ideas, which is fun too. And, and, and if you had one of your top tips that somebody you know, listening to today could start in moving forward and you know, implementing something new in their plant, what would you suggest that they do to get started? Uh, so you mean like culture or just anything in yeah, general? Uh, yeah, best tip, top tip. I think uh, be flexible with your methods. Be focused on your goal, but flexible in your methods. I think that's really important that you don't get so locked in that it has to be done your exact way, um, where maybe it is, there's another avenue to kind of get you to what you really want at the end goal. Um, And I think that also comes down to giving your people the pleasure of solving the problems and and really empowering them. I think that that is where real success happens. And also kind of a magic as a leader happens, when you get to watch your people kind of, not kind of, come to that point where they get to bring something into fruition and and see a project come together and it's all them and it's all their ownership and their, you know, there's a lot of pride that goes in and even the failures too, learning moments as well. So I think you got to give people the pleasure of, of solving problems. Well, Karen, again, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your insight and wisdom with us today. I'm Lisa Ryan. This is the Manufacturers Network Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Manufacturers Network Podcast. Do me a favor and share this podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can grow this network and connect more fantastic folks 
just like you. You can either send your buddies to the website at manufacturers-network.com or share the Manufacturers Network podcast on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you and your industry friends hang out. The bigger and faster we grow the network, the stronger and deeper the community will all have. Thanks again, and I appreciate you.